Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, cover a little bit more in depth this easy hook library that I, I introduced in the last episode. Um, in the last one, I did more of a demo. I might do another demo in this episode, but the main purpose here is to show you actually how to use this library. Um, it's pretty simple. So first thing you need is, is uh, an injector and some hook code. And what the injector does is it just takes the process ID of whichever process you're going to inject the hook into. And what it does is it injects a jump to the hook code DLL into the uh, process specified. So you need a process ID, which in this case we collect from the user. You need the path of the DLL to be injected, which in this case is the notepad hook DLL. And then you need this rh inject library function, which is from easy hook uh, library. And um, you provide it with the process ID, which we got from the user. Um, this is always supposed to be zero for whatever reason. And then uh, easy hook inject default is the type. So um, there's a few different types. For example, uh, default is a unmanaged, so a native basically, uh, DLL easy hook to inject managed is for like .NET DLLs, which are not really DLLs, if you ask me. Um, and then there's something called easy hook inject stealth, which says uses the experimental stealth thread creation. If it fails, you may try it with default settings. So basically, most of the time you're going to be using easy hook inject default if you're using the uh, if you're injecting a, a native DLL. So, um, and then this is important right here. So if you are doing a 64-bit injection, you need to put, uh, the DLL needs to be 64-bit too, and it needs to be supplied here. If you're doing a 32-bit injection, then the DLL needs to be 32-bit, um, and, and it needs to be supplied here. So, and then this will be null. And then if there's any data, so you can actually send data from this injector to the injected process through this uh, argument here, which in this case, I'm not sending any data, but if you want to, that's where you would put it. And then you would have to put the size. So you basically, you'd put a, a buffer, a pointer to a buffer in there, and then you'd put how big that buffer is or how much data you want to send here. And then down here, all we're doing is we're saying, um, you know, does that return zero? If it does not return zero, so that means it's, it failed, then we display uh, the error message. And that's pretty much all that's interesting here. So the next thing that we need to do is create the actual hook. And I showed some of this in the last video, but I just want to go into a little more detail. So um, in the last video, I explained how we actually have to take all the parameters for NT create or yeah NT create file because we're hooking NT create file and we want to call the actual NT create file afterwards. And then what I did in this video is instead of just having some stupid message here, I actually utilized the real data from NT create file. So the hook actually serves some useful purpose because what it's going to do is every single time NT create file is being called, it's going to give us the file name of the file and the full file path of the file um, that NT create file is being called on. And you can see that here um, under object attributes, object name, buffer. And then it's going to uh, display in a message box before actually calling the real NT create file. And um, one last important piece of this is uh, when you're making the hook DLL like this, you need to create a function called native injection entry point. And this is sort of like the main, see it says right here, easy hook will be looking for this export to support DLL injection. If not found, then DLL injection will fail. So it's sort of like the, the main entry point for the uh, hook. This actually does the hook install, it sets the hook up. So what we did before up here is we defined a hook function. So this is, you know, once once it's been hooked, what do I do? That's what this is right here. And then down here, this actually 
sets up the hook and, and, and actually uh, installs the hook, it's called. So um, the way this works is you have to set up a hook handle, which is why it's called H hook. And we're just putting null in there right now. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to do call LH install hook from the easy hook library. And we're going to supply the address of the function which we want to hook. So we don't know the address of the function until the program is loaded and so what we're going to do is do a git proc address on that particular function in that particular module once the program's loaded and we're running entry create file hook is the hook handler that we specified earlier that's what this is called by the way this is called a hook handler because it is essentially the code to execute once the hook's been once the hook's been installed. And then we have, um, let me look up, let me look up that argument right there so I don't give you the wrong information. LH install hook. Okay, so we have in the in entry point, the in hook procedure, the in callback. Okay, so yeah. So this is, so if you're going to have a callback, you're going to supply that here. And then the final argument is the address of the hook handle that we created earlier. And so essentially what's going to happen here is it's going to take the hook handle and populate it with the hook that we could then use. So you can see right here what we did. We do a set exclusive, uh, LH set exclusive ACL, and then we have to supply the hook handle. So that's what I mean by that. So the hook handle is going to keep track of the hook for us. So if it doesn't work, we're going to display a message box. Um, if it does work, this is just stupid because we can't display a console box anyway. So I'm delete that. That's the other thing too is I clean the code up a little bit since the last video. Um, and then right here, see it says if the thread ID in the ACL is set to zero, then internally easy hook uses get th get current thread ID. So all this is basically saying is use the current thread. And then uh, so LH set exclusive ACL basically disables the hook or deactivates the hook for the uh, for whatever thread ID that we pass to it. And that's pretty much it for this hook. So I'm going to leave it at that. I just want to give some more info on the code. So the rest of it you can kind of figure out. It's not that hard. And then um, one more thing I wanted to do real quick is just go ahead and run it one more time. So I'm going to open up Notepad. And then I'm going to get the... So it, we're talking about process 12172. So I'm going to try to run this injector here. Cross my fingers. Okay, one, two, one, seven, two, injected. So check this out. So this time, the hook's actually gonna show us some useful information. And it's gonna get, it's gonna get ran a whole lot too, because as soon as we hit open, Notepad calls a whole bunch of uh, NT create files. So see, every single time it's called, it's going to show us whatever file it's called on. So it got called on comdlg32, user 32.dll.mui, shell 32.dll, and so it's just, and remember, I mean, it's going to use this for all kinds of things, not just like writing to text files and and DLLs and stuff like that, but like it, it can even use it to communicate with drivers and any, any data object is basically considered a quote unquote file. So it's just, it just goes on forever. So NT create file is called a lot. <laughs> As you can see. Oh, geez. I messed up my code there because... All right, so I'm going to exit out Notepad, and that's the end of the demo. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. I crashed Notepad. <laughs>